like to take this opportunity to dive just a little bit further into the the nature of our first first part of the discussion, which was um, metabolic disorders, and I want to take it into an area that I'm really into, and I know you are. Um, I remember years ago reading Dr. Edward Howell's book, uh, Enzyme Nutrition, and mm-hmm. he made a statement that really caught me, and basically what he said was, all physiological breakdowns are due to the lack of enzymes or enzymatic capacity in the body. And through the years of my research, I came to these kind of ideas, and I would just like you to elaborate on them as it's relevant to the topic. Um, You know, from my perspective, I feel like enzymes are basically the scrubbing mechanism for fibrotic scar tissue, stuff like calcification buildup and um, protein coating that develops around certain disease cells that will go unnamed on this podcast. And um, these issues, from my, from my observation, appear to represent some of the root causes of most of the breakdowns that we see both physio- physiologically and neurologically. So I want to get your take on, on the, that statement. Uh, I'm in absolute agreement, and I have been... I, re- I read Dr. Howell's book, Enzyme Nutrition. Of course, he had taught... Um, my mentor, Dr. Michael O'Brien, and I recommend everybody who's into health read that book. It'll totally transform your perspective and what we're talking about. He really articulated it well. Now, what was interesting is enzymes and probiotics, and probiotics are really just little bags of enzymes that do specific functions. So they're essentially just a a little more conscious bag of enzymes. Enzymes Mm -hmm. Handle everything in your body from thinking to blinking. Every metabolic process, every movement, every thought, every chemical transaction, everything requires an enzyme. Now, according to Dr. Howell's research, he stated this is back in the 40s. The average 40 year old has less than 30% of the enzymes present in their body that they had at birth. This is what contributes to the degeneration and aging of our society because as oxidative stress comes in in whatever form, whether it's exercise, whether it's hot temperature, whether it's pesticides, it requires enzymes to break this down. And when you grow food, On a mineral deficient soil, as we have been doing for the last three generations, the food, the plant, will give up protein in its body and convert it to enzymes to keep the plant growing. So protein content goes down as minerals in the soil are depleted. Now, let's just take this over to humans. So... What happens with humans during the aging and degeneration process or in metabolic dysfunction? Well, we convert protein tissues, muscle tissue particularly, or skin tissue. That's why we get wrinkled and old. We start doing damage to the system. We're converting that to make enough enzymes to keep our body going. And Dr. Howe stated that the length of any organism's lifespan was directly related to the inverse enzyme potential. That is, how many enzymes were present in the body would determine how long that body tended to stay on the planet. And in his experiments, they and, and this came from Pottinger's cats. Pottinger's cats was a famous study that, you know, Pottinger took these cats and he fed some of them an enzyme-deficient diet. That would be diets that, that are uh, cooked food, because cooking food kills all the enzymes, and then that means the animal had to use its own enzymatic reserves, its own metabolic enzymes, and convert them into digestive enzymes to break down your food. And every doctor will say, you don't need enzymes because your body breaks it down. No, all food in its natural state has the enzymes to break it down, even us. When we die, the muscle tissue uh, releases a chemical that activates cathaskin, which is an enzyme that starts breaking down the tissue and we dissolve and turn in and become food for the bacteria. And that's just the natural order of things. And, and digestion is controlled rotting. You know, we, we, we break down enzymes. That's why you cut an apple open, you leave it on a counter, it starts to break down. But when you irradiate it or you cook it, now you nuke all the enzymes and now that apple will stay on the shelf 
for two weeks without going bad. And so what happens is people are accelerating the degeneration of their body through toxic diets, highly cooked, highly processed food, um, chemicals that are found, preservatives, um, also all the host of estrogen-based toxins. They are eating diets that are mineral deficient. So all of these are putting stress on them oxidatively, and it's also requiring more and more enzymes in order for their body to produce. And, of course, all women know this. All women, I, and I first discovered this with high-performance female athletes, and they would have a child. And sometimes after one child, they couldn't regain their form. Sometimes it was two, but it was almost always across the board after three. They had a hard time regaining their, their physical vitality levels. And I, what I came to believe was that they were transferring their enzymatic pool to their children and then when they were trying to perform at a high level, they couldn't do it. Now, when you take this over to a lot of these athletes, like fitness competitors, it's, it's widespread in all these fitness competitors. They go on these restrictive diets with massive amounts of exercise, huge amounts of these chemical-laden, calorie-deficient, and, and may I say emotionally deficient lifestyles because it's all about how I look in a bikini and all that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if, if that's your whole life, you've got some serious self-esteem problems that are going to set you up for these kind of metabolic flavor fa- uh, situations. And then, of course, now you pack all this stuff in. So it's just a cascade of effects. And then eventually they're like, all of a sudden, their T4 isn't converting to T3. That's what regulates metabolism. They've taken a massive amounts of a stimulants, which has blown out their adrenals. Their, you do a hair analysis, and their mineral imbalances are all over the place. They're not getting enough oxygen inside their body, so now they're relying on more anaerobic activity. And then they're, you know, the stress keeps building up, and then pretty soon they start gaining weight. And they don't know what to do, and they try another diet, and they try this, and they get this expert, and then, and then you know, they start feeling worse when stress is oxidative. And it's just this, it's just an endless cycle, and it's got to stop, and, and it stops by very simple. You take three servings of plant-based protein a day. You consume a high protease-based enzyme with it because protease, in my opinion, is the big factor because of undigested protein inside the body that, you know, that, that you know, we need to metabolize. And, and for some reason, the body cuts off protease production sooner than other enzymes inside the body. And you need to eat a big rainbow salad every single day. And then you need to reduce your training to a level that makes sense. And you need to allot the enough time for your body to rebuild itself and it will naturally go back to the state you want. That's how you overcome metabolic damage. Mm. Yeah, you said a lot of interesting things in there. For clarification, I just want to uh, mention, when you say T3 to T4, you're talking about thyroid hormone, right? Yeah, that, that's what you, there's a conversion process that goes on in, inside the body. And, and, of course, if you look at a lot of these people with metabolic damage, there, it, there's an, there's a a relation between adrenals and thyroid. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, again, keep in mind, these are symptoms, not causes. And it's really clear. People say, oh, well, my thyroid's normal and that's the thing and I've got this or I've got metabolic disorder. No, that's a, a symptom of modern lifestyles. And here's the great news. The body will correct all of these amazing metabolic processes, if you feed it the things it requires to do it, but it's got to have enough workers, and that's where enzymes come in. Enzymes are the workers. Most people are shocked to know I have been taking enzymes 25 a day minimum for the last 10 years. How I got out of metabolic dysfunction myself, because I've been there, I know what it's like, I felt the pain. You know, 42 pounds in 11 weeks, folks, it's not good. And I came out of it, I took 100, 100 enzymes a day for a year. I, I was better in six months, but I said, I want to see how far it can go. And uh, over the years, I haven't found a limit. I, I've had scars that are now healing on my body that didn't heal before. You know, like scars that I've had for 
you know, literally my whole life, they're starting to go away because I, my enzymatic pool is getting enough that it breaks that down. And, and Dr. O'Brien told me this. And a Dr. Howell talked about this. And I've seen this duplicated over and over and over again. So just follow what works. Mm. Well, that, there's a lot for people to consider. And I definitely, I mean... I'm definitely on board with everything you just said there, especially that's why I wanted to bring up the enzyme topic um, because there tends to be a lot of con, uh, confusion and, and oftentimes um, controversy in the more of the natural hygiene type of field. And that's not necessarily something we have to jump head first into, but just for clarification of um, the people listening to this, because I understand that all of us come from different philosophical backgrounds and we come from different nutritional um, schools of thought. And there, you know, why would it be, you know, I pose the question for the viewers listening, why would it, if you're eating an enzyme rich diet or what we consider to be an enzyme rich diet of raw plant food, maybe people are doing raw dairy products, um, whatever it may be why would we need to take enzyme supplementation? Absolutely great question. And it's something that I think is very pertinent. The whole basis of a live food diet or plant-based diet is that you get more enzymes. But people are not, and going back to the start of our conversation, look at a conventionally grown food. And look at something that you find wild crafted. There is a massive difference in the taste, in the flavor, in the enzymatic potential. Because any time that you accelerate growth through fertilizers, pesticides, or through hybrid growing, you lose a certain enzymatic component. Remember, going back at the turn of the century, we, they found that wheat was losing its protein content as it converted that into enzymes in order to grow itself on, on mineral deficient soils. Life will go on no matter what. It will compromise. It won't be the same, but it will go on. And the same thing for people. Now, if I eat a completely live raw food diet that's per se enzymatically rich, the only amount of enzymes that are going to be present in any live food is enough to digest it. That's if it's in its organic raw state. Nature doesn't waste anything. So it's not making, like, you, I cannot replace my enzymatic reserves just by eating organically raw, wild crafted, whatever you want to call it, food. I can't do it because if I'm, here I am at 40 years old, if I've only got 30% or less, according to Dr. Howell, of my enzymatic pool, I can't eat my way into the enzyme, I can't eat my way back into the damage I've done. I've got to find a way to infiltrate my system and get more enzymes in there. So by doing this, we look at it, well, what are my options? Well, a lot of people say, well, you can eat, you know, highly enzymatic foods. Well, that's true. You can do that, but I'm not interested in getting by. I'm interested in overcoming a, a debilitating condition or producing an extraordinary result as an athlete. So there are different types of enzymes. There are metabolic enzymes. Okay. So there are just normal plant-based enzymes. There are things like pancreatic enzymes. And pancreatic enzymes, for example, will work in a very narrow pH range or an animal-based enzyme. A plant-based enzyme usually works in a bigger range, the four main ones being amylase, lipase, um, protease, and cellulase. And there's a whole, like, there's literally 3,000 ones. But I think if you get those main ones inside your system, your body will break down, particularly protease, amylase, and lipase. Protease breaks down protein. Lipase breaks down fats. Um, amylase breaks down carbohydrates. Well, when you take, you, you now have methodologies, and this is one of the great things that Dr. Howell did, is he developed incredible ways of increasing the enzymatic potential massively in the products he was making. So he... He, he, he developed cultured enzymes, which was actually practiced for thousands of years in Eastern cultures. So he, he cultured these enzymes. So then you get a cultured enzyme. It's about a thousand times more powerful than an enzyme that you might find like bromelain or papain or something like that that's been extracted from a fruit or from an animal. And so regardless of your dietary stuff, when you – and what I suggest people do, whatever – enzyme that you want to try. Take the enzyme you do, 
throw a couple of them in a bowl of oatmeal and stir it up and see what happens. The kind of enzymes that I put into my body will liquefy that oatmeal in a, in a couple of minutes. I mean, it's turned to liquid. And the taste of it changes its ability to, my ability to extract the information. And I say that as information. We are getting information from our food. It's not just nutrition. It's nutritional information. Becomes increased and I'm not putting stress on my system. And that allows my body to metabolize it. It's why all animals, when they're hurt, they don't eat. Because they don't want to exert enzymatic energy to digest food. They simply let their enzymes go off and create metabolic enzymes to heal themselves. And that's one of the practices of fasting. But you can't fast yourself into increasing your enzymatic pool. You're going to take that away from your muscle tissue. And this is one of the the negativities or the detriments I've found. A lot of people are attracted into the raw food diet because they have compromised systems. And it does make a lot of sense. And the detoxification process is recommended and they fast and they cleanse and these are all awesome methodologies but at a certain point you know you've got to start building the tissues up and if you've exhausted your enzymatic pool trying to eat a diet that is low in amino acids and low in enzymes your body is going to convert the muscle mass into that and that's why i think you see a lot of people in the raw food community who don't carry a lot of muscle they're you know they, they just don't and that was one of my big things well I want to I want to be muscular. I want to still do the athletic things that I like to do and I'm a strength training guy. So I'm on the extreme end of that. But the same issue for people who are having metabolic issues. If you can't convert your T4 into T3, if you can't support your adrenals uh, through good mineralization inside your body and if you're not eating enough fiber and stuff in your diet, guess what? You're going to struggle with your metabolism and on top of it if you want to get out of there faster, slamming lots of cultured enzymes are going to increase and improve that process.